place the seals on the fuel dampeners. A couple O rings. I set up against the block. And if I can get the camera up in here, uh, they're somewhere back in here. So I gotta pull. Uh, it's not really the fuel rail, I guess the fuel assembly unit. I gotta pull this fuel assembly unit off. And uh, we're gonna attempt to get to these O rings. And uh, they, get, uh, they get hard and brittle. And uh, what happens usually when it's cold, they'll start leaking. And uh, you can see solenoids here. Look like they're also leaking. So I got gaskets for all that. And uh, hopefully, I'm gonna get the tripod set up here. And uh, I'll get some video of uh, me taking this all apart. assembly these are the dampeners right here all right you see this o-ring right here it's o-ring just like this it's just down in the dampener right there fuel comes up in through here that's where they leak these o-rings get really hard and when they get hard they start leaking see how hard it is it's not very rubbery, it's hard as a rock, just about. I can twist it, I'm surprised. That, that, there you go, see? So, right there, if you get a fuel leak, it's dripping behind this fuel assembly, 
it probably ate the filter, but check the filter and you can see where it's been dripping. Um, when it gets when it's colder, that's when it does it the most. Um, usually when you're overnight idling too, when it's real cold, uh, that's going to be your problem there. Uh, let me see here. Part number uh, it's gonna be one five one nine zero zero now I'm not 100% sure if that's Cummins or not but uh, at least that's when I looked it up that's the part number I got uh, for them also you're gonna want these seals they sit in the puck they go around the edge of the puck there um, I got a little too many, but I just got some just in case. That's your part number for that. If I can get it in the camera here. I don't know if I'm doing... There you go. That's your part number for that. This is your part number for the solenoid. Solenoid gaskets. Or, well, actuators, solenoids. That's the part number for that. I got the nice metal ones. I don't know if they're different or not. Here's your part number for the main assembly behind the behind the fuel behind the fuel assembly I guess or fuel rail or whatever you want to call it so that's all that I got the parts from where did I get the parts some of the parts I had to get off eBay the seals because uh, they were out uh, but I think I got them from US trucker or heavy heavy truck parts uh, or whatnot So, yeah, always be prepared. So, pretty easy. It's just two 10 millimeter bolts and uh, not an uh, 8 millimeter bolt, and you got it off. Replace the seal, clean it up in there, and uh, that's it for that. Hopefully, I'll have a video of this going back on pretty easy and not leaking or anything and running great. So, I guess. Uh, see the next video I'm gonna probably pull I'm gonna pull the solenoids off and clean them out so I guess I'll show you uh, me taking them apart and everything there's a fuel actuator it's a very small Allen take these apart I cleaned it all up on a little wire wheel now these are under spring pressure or at least it feels like it to me so I don't know to be honest I don't really know what I'm doing <laughs> I'm an auto mechanic, not really a diesel tech. So I'm gonna pull, pull this apart here. Without ripping the O-ring, hopefully. All right, that's the inside of the solenoid. Looks pretty clean in there to me. Uh, we're gonna shoot some carb cleaner through there anyway. Alright, well that's what the inside one looks like. Looks pretty clean in there. I don't think I'm going to pull the other ones apart. I mean, if you want to, you can. I'm a little worried about that little O-ring in there. And, uh, yeah, I don't want, I don't want no, no uh, big problems, if you know what I mean. So, I think that's going to be the only one I'm going to clean out. Especially since this isn't the cleanest of environments. So 
So there's what it looks like. I'm gonna put it back together and see what happens. Now, when you're tightening these down, try to tighten them down evenly. The train behind me, so. See this indented part? This ridge part faces up towards the actuator. The indent goes down towards the fuel assembly. All right? Just make sure you can see that on here. All right. See the ridge part? That faces up towards the actuator. I have a bolt to the back here to hold this gasket on. And then it's got a pin also. It has to go up a little moment. Actually, the second time I'm doing this job. Um, I highly recommend 
if you're doing this, buying your O-rings and your uh, seals right from Cummins. Um, I got mine from a pretty reputable online store. Um, you know, they have tons of uh, aftermarket accessories. Uh, they do, uh, you know, in-frame kits, turbos. You know, they're pretty reputable, but some some things you just you just have to get directly from the manufacturer. Um, right now, I'm like looking at these O-rings. At least the O-ring that went went bad in 200 miles, and I can tell the ones directly from Cubman's. They the rubber feels a little more hefty, I guess. Uh, I don't know. It just it just feels different than the O-rings that that I got sent from the other place. So what I'm doing right here is uh, behind the fuel assembly on a CM870 and a CM871. There are um, dampeners, fuel dampeners, and the little O-rings. There, I got the broken one here. Little O-rings here. They like to uh, get hard and brittle and start dripping fuel. Uh, usually the fuel drips out behind the, the fuel filter and you think it's the fuel filter leaking or and uh, it'll drip out and drip down onto the EGR piping and then uh, onto the ground and you know sometimes it can be a little bit sometimes in my case um, it seemed like it was dripping about a gallon or two out sometimes a night sitting there idling uh, when it was really cold uh, I guess temperature wise it would make a difference so I'm gonna flip this around here and we are going to go over some of uh, some of this assembly and everything and I'll show you some part numbers all right this is the fuel the fuel assembly unit this is your fuel pump this is your uh, your pickup pump uh, you know where your fuel Dampiness. filter goes and these are your fuel on the back here right here is where your o-ring would sit Here's the diaphragm I already got off. Right there, that little groove there is where your O-ring sits. I want to show you inside here. Let's screw this on too tight. There's a little, there's a gasket. Uh, I mean, not a gasket, a seal. On both sides of this puck. There's, this is the back side of the puck. I already pulled this apart. I replaced the seal. There's also like a, a plastic uh, washer in there that you can also get, but I didn't think there'd be a big difference if I replaced it. And that puck sits down there just like that. When you pull the top off, like so, the old O-ring is going to have an orange seal on it. Uh, I bought aftermarket and replaced it, but I'm going to replace everything again with uh, Cummins. So pretty much if you get it from Cummins, it's going to have this orange seal back on there. And it just lays down that groove. And you put these back on just like that. And you throw the O-ring in it. And you put it back on. Um, I don't know the torque specs. I couldn't find them anywhere. Um, I'm just hand threading it you know tight and then going back and forth until it's nice and even and and just tightening it uh nice and snug not in too crazy not too tight not too soft you know quarter inch ratchet they're only 10 millimeter bolts and then the ones uh the one that holds the two pucks together uh is uh an eight millimeter so i'm going to uh i guess show show you taking off the other one um like I said, this is already my second time. Apparently, it's not unheard of from what I've I've been told on Cummins groups and stuff on Facebook of these uh, these gaskets going right after you replace them, either either because you got them aftermarket or just for some reason them not uh, sealing property. Uh, so this, like I said, this is the second time I'm doing this. I only got 220 miles out of the last uh, seals. Uh, These are the actual O-rings that go. This is the Cummins part number. I'm not 100% sure if this is the same on on every year engine uh, from you know on an ISX uh, CM870 uh, or an 871. Uh, I'm pretty sure though this assembly is the same uh, through all the years. But like I said, make sure you check. Uh, go on CumminsParts.com and put your engine serial number in, 
uh, click on fuel and you'll be able to find find these part numbers this is the uh, this is the number this is the orange seal this is when you first pull the, the cap off that's the orange seal there that you're gonna find that's the part number for that I also suggest with the little ones getting more than one because it's, it's not that hard for them to decide to roll away so I got four four in there and then this is for the bottom the bottom seal the one I showed you on the bottom of the puck um, it's completely up to you to be honest uh, if you really want to change that one uh, you're gonna need a little pick to pick that uh, that diaphragm out of there that metal diaphragm or whatever it is and um, but I'm, I'm already here I already got the uh, the seals I'm changing it might as well uh, so I'm gonna uh, put the camera over here on a tripod and I'm gonna show you uh, me throwing I'm gonna be uh, bullheaded here and put this on in the dark with it snow and probably about 21 degrees right now and a nice, I don't know, five or 10 mile an hour wind here. So that's the part number for the gasket for behind the actual fuel. Back on, all the harness hooked up just for now until I get everything right and start zip tying it together. Crank uh, the camshaft sensor is hooked up. The Jake brake. Uh, let's see, all of that's hooked up. All the actuators are hooked up. Everything's hooked up. All lights hooked back up. The fuel filter is finally tight now. Uh, let's uh, crank her up here for the first time. Uh, hopefully, she starts up here. Took about I don't know about a minute last time, so. Uh, at least on these, I, I don't see anywhere. There might, there's a bleeder, I think, maybe one of these large bolts to pull out of the fuel filter, uh, the first fuel filter here, maybe to bleed some air out of it. But uh, I didn't really see anywhere else to actually, you know, pump and bleed like a cat or whatnot. So I filled the filter up, and uh, we're gonna kick her on and let the let the pickup pump run for a little bit, and then we'll try to fire her up. Pump go for a little bit. Uh, let's try it. <laughs> oh, of course, the freaking it's cold and the battery's dead. Well, we'll try her again.
I'm surprised you started up that easy. Oil pressure here. Let's go see how cold it is outside and go look at the pickup truck. <sighs> 29 degrees, it's probably colder than that because the pickup truck's running, so residual heat. the list of this nest, noisy ass engine. Flip off my hands. So, technically that job with hand tools, taking your time, you're probably looking at about, realistically like six hours, give or take, you know, uh, when I brought the truck back, to pull it off was nothing. It didn't take me no time at all. But, uh, put it back on, you know, take your time. Make sure you uh, get all the wires plugged in and everything. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, right now with uh, the way shops are and stuff, it's, it's, you know, unless you really screw something up, it's, uh, it's cheaper to do it yourself. You, you might only be down a day or a few hours. And, you'll save yourself tons of labor uh you know that 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 part at least to me you know to me uh it's rather simple to replace and do um the only thing that sucks is i've done it twice now so um you know buy quality cummins parts i guess for some stuff um uh, i'm gonna uh run her for a while and take her out for a spin maybe i'll put 100 miles on her or something uh Make sure the O-rings don't pop again. And, uh, yeah, saved myself. Hmm, I'd say, well, they probably would have ordered parts for you. Who knows what else they would have tried to say was wrong with it. They probably would have told you the actuators were bad, too. Actuators are like $500 a pop right now. The cheapest ones I could find are remand. Um, so, you know, if they tell you they're all bad, you know, you got, you got a hell of a price tag there. Um... I, I did pull the actuators off, put new gaskets on them because they were leaking a little bit. Um, if you ever get if you get the gaskets, they're the metal, at least on mine, are the metal gaskets. Uh, I asked around on the internet. Supposedly, the I guess the the gaskets are stamped and there's a lip on them that pops up that goes towards the uh, the actuators. Um, it probably don't really matter, but at least that's what I was told on a couple Cummins forms. Um, so, you know, uh, replace them while you're there, I guess. Um, they're not that expensive. Um, but like I said, if you went to a shop, they probably would charge it. Uh, they would probably save the gaskets altogether were 200 bucks from Cummins or something. And, um, you know, and then they would charge you probably $150 an hour labor rate. And say it takes six to eight hours probably. And then shop fees. So now, you know... You got like a two thousand dollar job so far. This so far technically only cost me like uh, two hundred and eighty dollars in gaskets because I, I did it over again. Um, the Cummins gaskets were of course more. I only spent like I think like ninety eight dollars or eighty nine dollars on the the aftermarket ones. Well, you know the whole, you know all the all the, um, the seals I needed, and um, that was plus the gaskets for the uh, actuators. So, you know, uh, I spent a thousand dollars because the tow bill. Remember what I said the tow bill was going to be? Well, you know, if it was just a tractor, yeah, my tow bill would probably be five hundred bucks. But they uh, charged me for the tractor and trailer. I guess this old man. Um, I don't know. I guess he wanted some money. <laughs> but I, it still was only eight hundred dollars for the tow. Uh, it was about a fifty-mile tow. 
and you know they, they he risked it too because he had to go through the scales up here on 81 were open and you know they didn't bother him but technically they could have gave him a hard time because you're only supposed to really tow you know just the tra truck and or the trailer separately you know so you know it cost me thousand dollars hopefully i don't uh drive another 220 uh, miles or something and the uh that little o-ring blows again um i'll say if it does it again i i don't know what i'm gonna do um i already had a few people mention on uh the isx forums on the groups um one guy said he's did it three times after the third time he, he, he didn't have any problems with it so you know things happen um, I guess if it was a shop they warranty it you'd still probably have to pay for toes I don't know how that would go but, uh, you know it's the life of owning older equipment uh, this technically is a maintenance item and uh, yeah so far, the best thing is I, I didn't really break down far away from the house. I, I'm that thankful. I'm thankful it did hold up, and I went, I don't know, up to Maine or North Dakota in a snowstorm, and, and then it had to start pissing uh, fuel out all over the place. And then, like I said, uh, you know, luckily the state trooper just, you know, checked at, checked me out and said, hey, you're leaking when he was next to me. You know, he didn't, didn't work into it a little bit. Like I said, that could turn into hundred thousand dollar or more you know environmental cleanup it, it, if you if you drop a gallon of fuel or, or anything on the road um, you know who knows what they can they can do uh, that's why uh, a lot of a lot of truck companies keep spill kits you know in case the tanks rupture and all kinds of stuff um, but hey uh, any comments questions I, I got like I said I got a lot of a lot of video I got to edit here um, from between the first time of doing it and this time um, it, I probably got a good hour maybe more video so I gotta condense this all down in like 20 minutes because I got a lot of b-roll footage so um, be safe out there uh, you know comment subscribe if you can I'll try to keep making videos like this um, I'm kind of beat. I'll let this thing run for a while and probably go home and shower and go to bed. <laughs>